All right, Linux fans, it's time for part two of Dolphin is Awesome, and today we're going to cover the menu bar as well as the toolbar. We'll also get into configuring Dolphin. So your menu bar is this list of menus here at the top. Now this may be turned on by default or it may be turned off by default depending on your particular distribution and the way things are set up out of the box. So <clears throat> from the menu bar you've got some options here that may be redundant with what you have here in the toolbar. The nice thing about the toolbar is you can set this up with your own shortcuts to the various actions that you've got from the menu bar. In fact, you could set up enough to where you really wouldn't have to have the menu bar. You could set everything up pretty much within the toolbar. So let's go ahead and just turn this off for now. And I want to show you what it would look like because mine was set up this way by default where I had control. So here you'll see that kind of gives it a nice clean look. Now also we're going to step through the variations here of the toolbar and some of the things that you can do to adjust this and really make this personal for you. So we're going to turn the menu bar back on for now and you'll go to control show menu bar. Let's start with file. Here's where you can create new folders but there's much more there than just folders. You could create a new text file, an HTML file, a link to a URL, a basic link to a file or directory. So if I were networked here, I could set up a direct link to, you know, a folder within the network. Could also link to a specific application. Maybe there's an application that I'm going to use with a particular file, and I just wanted a quick link to that application and then link to device. This is where I could link to an external drive, uh, USB flash drive, so on and so forth. <clears throat> Excuse me. We could also create a new window. So now we're going to have duplicate windows there. Create a new tab. And this is useful if you wanted to bounce back and forth. So we could be in documents here and the main home folder here, for example undo and close tab or close tab so if we had that tab still open you'd have an opportunity to close or undo close now here you also have options for renaming so if we were to select a file and I forgot to mention this in in part one and some of this stuff may be redundant uh, but the one, one thing that really stands out when you first start using Dolphin is that there is an option here to select individual folders or files just by simply hovering and you'll see the plus sign and once you hit the plus sign you'll see now that the text is highlighted with a, a color here which is in this case blue um, until you deselect so for now we'll keep video selected and if we go back to file we now have options for renaming moving to trash or delete or we could launch right into the properties of that particular folder and under properties you can set up permissions for various users and control what they're able to do with that particular folder or file advanced permissions so you can set up UID for example you could also apply any of these changes to all of the subfolders and their contents if I had Samba set up, I could set up sharing as well. And this is just going to give you the general information. Modified access, things like that. So if you wanted to see, if you were networked and you wanted to see the last time someone accessed a particular folder, that information is going to be in properties. Alright, so that's file. We'll go ahead and deselect that. Next up is edit. And you're going to see here again, you've got undo copy, paste one file. Uh, cut and copy, find, as well as select all. Now find is search, they call it find here, but this allows you to go in and quickly search and we looked at find uh, in part one and we may get into that in more details in another video. So you'll see here there's some redundancy with the toolbar that we have here. 
Next up is view. And from that you can zoom in or zoom out. So we could zoom in, but you also have your slider bar here. You could change the view mode, icons, compact, and details. But we also have those set up here, so you could change those quickly from the toolbar. Sort by, and this is where Dolphin starts to show how powerful it really is. You could sort by everything from name to type or accessed when it was last accessed, rating, which I want to get into, and tags, because these are two areas that really start to set uh, Dolphin apart from other file managers. Also comments. You could also sort by the document, title, word count, or line count. So you're starting to see here really the amount of detail and level for really structuring and setting up Dolphin uh, at a level that you just typically don't find in some of the more simple you know, just general simple UI layout, cut, cut, copy, paste, rename folder type explorers. Same with audio. So you could sort by artist, album, duration, and track. Now think about that if you're someone who has an extensive library of music on your system. The ability to really go in and work with you know, various tracks and sort things this way I think would be extremely useful. You know, of course, though, we are living in a time where a lot of your music's just in the cloud, so you don't have to worry about it. But if you do, it's there. And then you've got other here where you could sort by path or the destination or where it was downloaded from or permissions that you've set up or who the owner is or a particular group. And then, of course, you have descending, ascending. And this one I always choose, which is folders first. So when you go into any given um, folder, let's see here, I'm going to create a new folder real quick. We'll just keep it new folder. And you'll see immediately that will be placed ahead of any of the other documents. So very powerful sorting. And then you have additional information where you could go in and see size, when it was modified, access. So if we go to size, you'll see now you're seeing size. So you could, now, you know, at some point it kind of gets cluttered, uh, but if we go into modified, so now you'll see they'll sort by when it was modified. So it's just going to change the, the, um, it's going to change how it's listed depending on the view that you have. So if we go to compact view, for example, uh, it'll sort based on whatever your view setting is at that time. So you'll see how things change there. Same with details. Now here you've got modified, so you could quickly choose modified and cycle that ascending or descending. Then you have preview. So we're going to go back over to the icon setting and we're going to go to view and preview. So actually let's go over to pictures. I've got preview turned on there. And we can toggle that off. You know, depending on your system preview, it takes a little while longer for uh, preview when it's on to populate. So if you launch in for the first time, you'll see that the previews take a little while to generate or pop up. Um, so, you know, that's entirely up to you. If Typically, if I'm working with photos, I just like to see a preview there. You can show in groups, and I find this useful as well. And there's, um, you know, alphabetical in this case. So if we were to go to compact view, you'll see here the, the layout, how it's changed. Again, alphabetically. And then under details. Then there's hidden files. And what you're going to see there typically is it's going to populate or show any hidden system files. So if we go into documents again here, you'll see a directory file that popped up there that was hidden. And then you have a view for split. So you've got dual windows here and this comes in useful if you just want to drag and from one folder to another or you know, drag over from one directory to another. 
we'll go ahead and close that out so we're back to one window you could reload so let's say you've uh, copied over several files and maybe um, for whatever reason one file didn't show up in the actual session that you were went were in you could hit reload and sometimes that will then appear panels we talked about panels some in part one so right now we have places open we're going to go ahead and open information now information is a useful panel because it allows you to add tags ratings and comments and again we're going to get into that in another video series but this is a very very useful way to uh, make sure that you have very quick access to documents that are important to you that you could search and find those extremely fast by using this tool set. Other panels include folder panels and terminal. And then you have location bar. So we could turn that on and now we've got an editable, not editable, but <laughs> a location area that we can edit not edible so <laughs> so uh, you know this is something that you know, people who are, are used to keyboard commands and that's the way they function um, you know this this is something if you're fast at typing you could just change your location or type out your location and go to that location quickly and then we've got adjust view properties so this is an area where again you can really drill down into the details of any particular view so here we have icons chosen so we could sort by ascending or descending last modified but you have options for name and size when it was accessed type rating now that's where you'll see again the rating and the tags and the comments are going to come in very handy sort uh, modified um, by title or word count or not excuse me not modified but sorted uh, show preview so you could toggle on from there showing groups show hidden files and then there's additional information track path so on and so forth now you could go ahead and apply this view to the current folder current folder including all subfolders or all folders and you could also choose to use these view properties as default now for myself personally I've got it set up I don't get into a lot of depth as far as sorting but there are times where I will change for example the the view or the look of compact view and details view with icons I'll typically just set them a particular size and um, and leave it there but again tags and ratings do come in handy alright so here we see more redundancy up back home recently closed tabs under tools you've got a filter bar so let's go over to documents and so quickly if I wanted to filter copy of you'll see as I start typing it's going to filter out by title any of the documents that have the wording copy of could open the terminal from here you can compare files and then select remote character set now here we go you you could quickly toggle on or off your toolbar or your menu bar from settings but this gets you into much deeper levels where you can configure dolphin we're gonna look at that you can configure your shortcuts and configure your toolbar so this is where we could go in and add additional um, actions along the toolbar first we'll take a look at configure shortcuts and for those of you who use your keyboard and you like using keyboard commands for everything this is where your candy store is this allows you to go in and really set up and adjust just about every action that is available within Dolphin probably every action that's available within Dolphin and I really like this in that I don't use it that much myself but there are a few areas where I would go in and set up specific key combinations uh, for something that I'm going to do often so uh, for example 
if I wanted to copy, I knew that I was going to copy a group of photos from one folder into another, um, I could set that up. So you see a full list here also so that you are not overriding an existing combination. You can also set up schemes. This gets deeper than I would ever go as far as keyboard commands, but the option is there. And this is again an area where there's more than meets the eye with, with Dolphin. Alright, let's go ahead and move over to help and then I'm going to come back and we're just going to toggle off the menu bar. So under help you've got the Dolphin handbook and this is a very extensive handbook. Uh, you can sort alphabetically or by topic with you know there's links here to Wikipedia um, desktop terminology application starter I mean it breaks everything down and reading through this is you know it could be time consuming but if you're really wanting to dig in and you know kind of get an idea for all of the various capabilities or things or maybe something specific that you're looking for I would certainly go here first you know, or the Google alright and then you've got search options where you can search through the glossary as well now this is nice too you can increase and decrease the font size so if you're vision impaired you could bump that up alright so we'll go ahead and close that out also under help you've got what's this report bugs donate switch the application language so we go from American English Portuguese Indonesian Spanish Italian German low German so um, Turkish Romanian, several Korean, uh, Japanese, so on and so forth, Netherlands. So lots of language options, which is always good to see. And then you could add a fallback language as well. All right, so we're going to go ahead to settings and we're going to toggle off the menu bar. Next, we're going to right click and this is a right click on any blank area within the toolbar and you can launch into toolbar settings so from here we could change the text position so here I've got the text under the icons we could change that to icons only you'll see that kinda of cleans things up nice clean look small icons crisp icons or we could change that to text only maybe you're just not familiar with what the actual icon action is and you'd prefer just to read that out you could also t do text alongside icons all up to you whatever your preference is and then text under icons now the next area I really think that <laughs> this is where again you just don't think about um, the fact that not only are they going to allow you to you know, show where your text is uh, but you can also adjust the icon size so again if you're vision impaired uh, you could bump that icon size up and that may help you let's go to huge that may help you to be able to navigate easier with what you're doing then we have configure toolbars and this is the area where you can go to add additional actions within the toolbar so let's scroll down here to create folder for example so if we wanted to add that you simply highlight it with a left click and then you could go over you've got what you've got here you've got various separators you see those separators here so once we add that you can go over and you can drag that to other categories within the separator. I'm going to keep it where it is though. 
Now, if you wanted that to stand out, you could do a couple of things. You could change the icon. So maybe you go to other icons, and if you had icons set up in a particular folder, you could browse to those. And then you could choose an icon that would really stand out and be different from the other standard Breeze icon sets that are in place for the toolbar. Or you could change the text on that. But we're just going to go ahead and click Apply. And now you'll see that we've got Create Folder there. And so you could do that with um, a, a large assortment. Let's just go in and take a look. With just about every kind of control or action that you would want to work with. So you could really load this thing up. And that's where the ability to decrease the um, icon size and change where your words are located within the icon could come in handy. Uh, if you took this down to just the icon level, you could squeeze in more actions, for example. Now we're going to go over to Control. And of course, let me back up. You could rearrange these icons as well. And you can change where the separators are. So you could shift things around. So, for example, let me go back in. I want to make sure I don't miss that. If we wanted to take cut and move it down and, and put it somewhere separate from copy, uh, we just click apply after we've done that and you'll see now copies here and cut is here. So we'll move that back up. And now they're back together. Let's say we wanted to remove that. Uh, you could highlight that and then click the arrow to put it back over into the left hand column. The same with cut. Click apply. And now those are gone. So you could right click on any space. So if you launch in and by default you only have the toolbar, just know that you can right click on any empty space within the toolbar area and then have those options. Next up we're going to go to control and we're going to skip through a lot of this because some of this again is redundant to what we had in the menu bar. Um, so we're going to kind of scroll all the way down and we're going to go to Configure Dolphin. Now Configure Dolphin is an area that I typically launch into in the beginning and the reason is is you've got a lot of uh, basics here that allow you to structure things that are kind of global structure if you will. So under startup for example uh, if I did not want to start in the home folder maybe you've got a directory or something networked in that you'd like to start in instead you can simply point to that directory or location and that'll be your default. You quickly go back and use default location or use a current location so if you're already in a particular directory or folder you would simply choose uh, use current location. You could set up global split view mode here, edi um, editable, <laughs> the location bar, not editable, but editable location bar. Uh, you could show the full path inside the location bar. You could show the filter bar and show the full path in the title bar. So if we click apply, you'll see all of those changes took place. So that's why typically I would just go right into Dolphin Preferences and kind of set things up, you know, how, how I want them. So you could go in and quickly, without kind of navigating a lot of different settings, go in here and, and do a lot of what you could do in other locations as far as settings are concerned. So I'm going to turn that off. Click Apply. Now it's right back where it was. All right, now we'll go to View Modes. Now this is where your View Modes, you get some added... Uh, settings and customizations within view modes and I really wanted to point this out because this is an area again if you're vision impaired um, that would be I think really really helpful but also from an aesthetic standpoint it allows you to go in and change things such as your font so here I have the Arial font set up and you could change the size of that font so we're gonna bump that up to 16 but just because I want to illustrate to you how awesome this would be for someone who just you know their visions not great or their vision impaired and uh, I think this would be something that's extremely helpful for that person so we're going to click apply 
and then you'll see here you've got an option for lines so if you're adding more information about that particular file or document uh, you you can add lines here and then the other thing we would change because now we've increased the font size we would change the width or the spacing between those folders so we're going to go to large click apply and now you'll see that you've got a larger gap but that allows those document or that that allows the particular word to fill that space uh, and now to match kind of the font size again uh, from a, a point of you know making things larger and easier to read if you have issues there we'll go ahead and adjust that default size up click apply and now you could you know, easily see that from a distance or navigate that easier I would say if, if you've got vision issues alright <clears throat> so we're going to take that back down again go to control configure dolphin view modes now you can do this with every view mode so you have icons compact and detail so you can go in and make the same adjustments that I just made within the icon mode in compact and details mode all right, so we'll go back in and adjust our font size back down. We'll go back to medium width and we'll take the icons back down and click apply. We'll go ahead and bump that up just a little more. Next up is navigation. So under navigation, you've got two options. You can open archives as a folder and open folders during drag operations. So those are your only two options under navigation. And then we have services. And I think I could do an entire video on just services. So instead of, for this video, breaking, what er breaking down what everything is and does, this is an area that's going to differ depending on your installation. Some services will be uh, pre-installed in some distros, and then other distros will not have as much. Uh, but it gives you the service or the action of root actions for example change permissions copy delete as root things like that and then you get into other things such as Dropbox so if we wanted the ability to interact with Dropbox we could turn on that service or get uh, start a slideshow for example write image to disk now these services can be turned on and off by a simple click so if they're already set up and installed and you don't use it or don't want it you can simply click it and turn it off or if you're looking for a new service or action you can download and install right from within Dolphin a new uh, add-on action or service so it's gonna take a minute here for whatever reason to load the data it's typically not that slow there we go you can sort here by newest rating most downloads and installed or do a search so you'll get a description but if you need more details you simply click on details and then you can read into and figure out if this is something that's going to do what you were looking for and if you like what you see there you simply click install and then you've added that particular service I'm not going to say all of these are perfect and that they all do exactly what is described and I think for some of the reasons there that it's kind of you know hit or miss maybe is of course there's lots of updates going on within KDE and if this particular service or add-on has not been updated for the newer version you could run into some issues um, but so this is something you'll definitely want to explore if you've got specific needs for a specific action within Dolphin next up we have trash so you've got some options here you can de delete files older than and set specific number of days uh, you could limit the trash can to a particular size and when you've reached that limit you could choose to get a warning or delete the oldest files from trash or delete the biggest files from trash and then you have general so with general this will again give you kind of some overview options or some um, not overview what's the word I'm looking for um, global options if you will 
so you can set up to remember the properties for each folder or use common properties for all folders. For sorting mode, you've got options there. So we're going to go with alphabetical sorting case sensitive or insensitive. <laughs> and then you've got show tooltips, show selection marker, rename inline, use the tab for switching between between right and left split view. So if you wanted to rename, you know, a, a particular document in line here, you could do that and, and, and you wouldn't get an additional pop-up, for example. And then under previews, uh, so in part one I talked about if you had it set up properly, you're going to get previews for certain documents and files. So here we have folders, images, JPEG images. But you could also turn on audio files, for example, or comic books. Krita documents, if you use Krita, text files, video files, and there's specifics there. And then you have Microsoft Windows or, or for their executable or Windows images, so on and so forth. Next up is confirmation, so you could ask for confirmation in, in uh, all KDE applications when moving files or folders to trash, deleting files or folders, executing scripts or desktop files, or ask for confirmation when closing Dolphin windows with multiple tabs. So, you know, a lot of times if you've got multiple tabs open, maybe you meant to close out one tab and you were in a hurry and you accidentally just kind of went up to close all of Dolphin. Kind of, kind of what can happen sometimes when you have multiple tabs within a browser. And last here on the list is the status bar. So you can show the zoom slider, which we have down here, and then the space information, which we have here. It shows you how much free space you have. So the Dolphin Preferences, again, is an area where I kind of go in first and set things up a specific way. And I would recommend that if you're getting into Dolphin for the first time, that you explore these settings and kind of go to this first and uh, work your way through and figure out you know, what works for you. All right, well, we're going to wrap up part two here. So we talked about, again, the menu bar. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and turn that back on. We talked about the menu bar. And later on in, in the series, we'll go, go through some of the more detailed settings through the menu bar. And then we have here the toolbar. And we talked about how you could set up shortcuts, change the size of the uh, icons, you can also change the size of the font here and um, make adjustments. We also talked about configuring Dolphin and changing some of the views and size of font here within the window for the folders and the different files. So I hope that helps and we'll continue on with this series and get into lots of other aspects. I think next we'll get into tags and ratings and comments for folders and getting get into uh, more ways to search and find what you're looking for within Dolphin. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching, and we will check you later.